worship together.
destruction, not with anything bad, but with his love. And I used my phone really quickly to Google a definition. And this is the one I found. It said, reckless, marked by a lack of caution. And I want to tell you, God is not cautiously loving you this morning. You may look like you're a risk, but he doesn't see you as a risk. You may think there are a million reasons for him to be cautious about pouring out his love on you. You know, that's what we do as humans. Even in parenting, we get tempted to withhold to kind of get people to do what we think they ought to do. But that's not how he parents us. So I just want to introduce you afresh and anew or for the first time to the God who does not hold back his love. The lie in the Garden of Eden was that he was holding something back. That's the accusatory lie of our father. He loves recklessly. He's not cautious about pouring out his love on you because of little things about you that aren't corrected yet. He doesn't think that. And I heard the word refreshing in the house this morning. And I really believe there's a refreshing and we're gonna pray into that. Roberta Gross is having a major refreshing over there. I don't know the dimensions or the scope or the, but I know it's happening to you, but she is a point of contact for all of us. And the kind of refreshing I mean, you know, sometimes we use these words and they sound touchy-feely. And hey, touchy-feely is okay if you need it, if you need a touch and a feel, right? But, you know, on a computer, the word refreshing has a different meaning, doesn't it? And the thing I was reminded of this morning, even before I got here, was when our youngest son was waiting to hear if he was accepted or not into the School of Engineering of a certain large university, can I tell you, it was late when they let him know. And it was his dream and he had no kind of plan B. I mean, he did, but he hated them. It was plan A. And even as a parent, I was thinking, oh, Jesus. And you know what he did? He just kept hitting refresh. He hit refresh, he hit refresh. Because nowadays, I don't know if you know this, they let you know electronically before they send that letter in the mail. And so he just kept hitting refresh and it went on for a few days. And then one morning, I heard a scream, the decibel level of which was unparalleled. I really felt the earth tilted a little on its axis. And I knew he either got good news or bad news, but I knew he had hit refresh one more time. And indeed, the news was, guess what, Noel Brownback, you're accepted. And I just wanna say this morning, some of you may have hit refresh before. Some of you may have made a stab at Christianity, made a stab at believing God loved you before. Can I challenge you? Hit refresh again today. You are accepted. He is not viewing you with caution. And if you've ever pushed that button and thought, yeah, I'm not in yet. I'm not good enough yet. I'm not accepted yet. That was the stuff in your head that was standing in the way of the truth but it's a new day and there is refreshing, just like the cool, crisp air outside, hallelujah. Not even filled with rain right now, it's just cool and crisp, yeah? So if you wanna pray into some refreshing, let's do that right now. Listen, it's feelings, it's, it's touchy-feely if you need touchy-feely. God knows how to comfort your emotions, but also he knows how to refresh dead dreams. He knows how to refresh a sense of his fatherhood or even begin it for the first time if you need that. So Father, we just come to you to now as your people. We all come to you and we yield ourselves to your mighty refreshing power. Lord, we thank you for, for just doing a work within us, spirit, soul, and body, that we are not those that have given up. We are not those on the sidelines thinking, well, maybe the next people will get through. It's us, Lord. It's us. We're the candidates for your acceptance. We're the candidates for your reckless love. You're, we are the candidates for all that you want to refresh within us. And I'm speaking particularly to some of you who've had some dreams die. Refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. New day, new way. I hear the Lord saying, new day, new way. That old dream's gonna take a new form and manifest. That's what creativity is. It's the redo of the old in a fresh new package. God's the master of creativity in your life. Oh, Father, I thank you for refreshing in this auditorium for every single person. 
just open your hearts and connect to it. And we just welcome your presence to work and deal and be among us. Be yourself among us, Lord. And show us more than ever before how much we can be ourselves in you. And it's in Jesus, that mighty name that we were singing about, that we pray. Amen and amen. You can give a shout or a clap or whatever you want and be seated. We want to welcome all of you to the Abbey. At the end of the service, our leadership would love to meet you if it's your first time. We'll be right through those doors over there, and we'd love to just take a time and give you a gift and shake your hand and hear your story a little bit and know what brought you here and let you know us. And we also, speaking of refreshing, we also have some guests among us today that have been here years ago, actually one of them has, and they're going to come greet you in a minute. We're an international church, aren't we? Last week we had Pastor Roland from Namibia, and uh, today I'm going to invite Rich and Maria Lush to come on up, one or both. So what you need to know about Rich Lush is that he came, they're from England, you'll hear that clearly in a minute, he came on many, many trips from the church that we have worked closely with in England over the years, and uh, it's called Aaron Community Church. And then he came and he moved over here and was our children's pastor for a year. Only there was someone back home that was calling him back, not literally, she wanted the will of God to be done. But anyway, this, and Paul and I got to go over in our first ever British wedding to attend and we actually did the little preach at was their wedding. So I'm going to let them greet you and just share their hearts briefly here. And he's going to be speaking at youth tonight. Hi, good morning. Hi. Lots of people. It is um, it's just amazing to be back. Um, I just, it's just like coming home. Yes. That's what it always feels like. O always, it's the first time since seven years. It's been seven years oh, well, since we left, or since I left. Maria left on the Skype screen. She wasn't actually here. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. I just, um, we love being here. And since coming back, it's just been like being family and being home. And there's something about the Abbey. When, when I came, when I came out all those years ago, and I was saying this to Paul and Perry on the other day, I'd, I'd had a, a rough time with some church stuff that had gone on. Um, not Aaron Church, different one. But um, this is always a place of healing. And it's always felt like a a place to come and to rest and to be and be refreshed. And um, there's something about the culture of the Abbey and what it creates and what it stirs up. And even for us, we, li we live really busy lives. I work um, for a church as a youth worker and I work in a food bank and I'm also studying and doing a bit of bookkeeping on the side and occasionally have a night off. Um, so just to come and be and to rest has been so amazing for us um, and just so refreshing. Um, so we're just... It's great to be among y'all. Um, it's great to be here. I did say y'all. <laughs> she just dropped the mic now. It comes right back, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's great to be here, and we are around this Sunday and next Sunday, and love to talk with you guys. And if you don't know, say hi. Um, yeah, it's fun. If you were in our youth group, well, if you, know, if you were in my children's group when I was a children's pastor, please come tonight. If you know people who were, invite them. It would be great to have them. Um, we're just going to be sharing a bit of our story, a bit about what's happened over the last seven years and before. Um, yeah. Do you want to say something? I haven't really got much to add. <laughs> uh, Rich really loves you guys. It's <laughs> honestly it's such a privilege to come here with him and see his home, because that's what you guys are to him, and it's not even necessarily the place, it's who you guys are as a church and as a family to him, and it's, um, I feel like I'm constantly meeting his parents again, <laughs> but in a really great way, like I'm just being welcomed in, and, and you guys are just really amazing, so thanks. Thank you, Maria. That was lovely. All right, thank you. Give them a big hand. And yes, indeed, if you're a youth or if you are in his children's ministry, which means you're now a youth because seven years passed, um, yes, please come tonight at 6 p.m. Also, 
He's, he's so right. We are a wonderful, welcoming family. And the biggest manifestation of that is every year at our Thanksgiving dinner. And we love, thank you for that cheer. We love to host a Thanksgiving dinner. It's the Sunday before the week of Thanksgiving. So it kicks off your week. That would be November 18th. I think they have a slide about, can you put the other slide up first? And then we'll go back to that one. Thank you, Carla. And the theme this year for the Thanksgiving dinner is un expected blessings and the scripture is Ephesians 3:20 and so if you want to enter our centerpiece contest little competitive creativity then there is a link right there that you can sign up so our wonderful executive assistant Naomi Spradlin even told you sign up using this link take a picture so, see what I mean? Now, if you have your phone out and you're taking a picture, it's because you read that. But we want you to, there will be prizes and there'll be fun. There'll be other decorations at the Thanksgiving dinner as well. And the amazing Vanessa Hart is in charge of that. And the pumpkins are going to be unexpected, but to make them unexpected, Vanessa would love it if you could help her out by donating a pumpkin, any size, any color. No, say it loud. Okay, C come here. Come here, Vanessa. Vanessa, what do you always text me if I don't do it? Okay, so tell them, tell them that because I didn't do it as well as you should. No, you think I did it? Okay. If you are new to this church, they would love to meet you to my left, to your right. Good. Because they need to seal the deal. <laughs> So good. Okay. I would like any kind of pumpkins you have. What I when I'd ask for donations originally, I meant like if you bring out your old stuff from last year and you're like, I don't like that anymore. I don't like those colors. I'll take those off your hands because I'm painting them anyways. So if you bring them to church at at any time, I'll take them. But if you wanted to buy some real ones too, feel free to do that because, like I said, I'm painting them. So anything you have left over, I'll just fix it up. And when do you need it by? Like any time. Just a little spray paint. Any time. <laughs> I'll bring a bag to church or something. You're the best. You're the best. We're going to put some kind of a receptacle in the, yeah, yeah, Vanessa, in the foyer. And um, we have, we also do our annual Abbey Awards, and we do it up like the Oscars, sort of, except sillier. So, you know, it's a great time to bring people that have a religious image of church and expose them to another version of family and fun, which, you know what? Listen, fun can be evangelistic because religion sucks the fun out of things. I, this morning I thought again of recently I came up with, let's put the fun back in functional. And that's what we're striving to do because that's a kingdom force. So to feed all the people that come, and it is this auditorium is packed, we have to have a plan, and the consummate planner, Tabitha Denny is now going to come and share about that plan. Yes. So, wow. Hi there. Um, so, yes, I know that every year you look forward to me nicely manipulating you into bringing things. It's a real treat. I know it's fun for you. It's fun for me. It's smooth. I'm really great at it. My, one of my top, top five strength finders is woo. So I just woo all over you. Um, but this year, <laughs> wow. <laughs> This year, we're going to do something different. I'm going to free you of that awkward moment of raising your hand in the middle of this congregation. I'm going to free you from that. Yes, you're welcome. So, so this year, this year we're actually doing sign-ups. Um, we're doing it more functional. So we're sending them out to your community group. So um, this link here, and both of the links that have been advertised today are going to be incorporated into your community group sermon notes. So you will have an email, and you can have access to them very easily that you can click on them. Everyone says thank you. Yes. See, I wooed you into that. I wooed you. You didn't know. I, I, you are wooed. Um, so this year... So both if you want to do the competition, please sign up through that link. But if you also would like to sign up for food, you'll get more information at your community group and you'll have access to do that. So community group leaders, if you could just be in the know and um, go ahead and use that link first so that you can help others in your, member, like in your group uh, through it, that would be really helpful. 
We're asking for each group to sign up for at least two to three main dishes. So that's a turkey or a ham. Um, and there's, there's sign-ups on there, so you'll be able to fill your slots very, very easily. And then everybody else... I'm um, signing up for your main dishes. I've allocated some side dishes um, in the sign up, but if you want to bring something fancy, I've also put an opportunity for you to fill in the blank so, if, so you don't have to feel constricted so that you, you can woo me. You can woo me that way. It's really great. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, the sooner you sign up, um, the, the more we will know what we can prepare for. And then also the sign up will add reminders. It will automatically send reminders for you. And everyone said... Wow. So nice. Woo. Woo. Yes. Um, okay, and then another announcement that we have is the Ministerial Alliance is looking for volunteers to help with serve at their Thanksgiving dinner um, or to help with their Thanksgiving dinner. I added serving. I actually don't know that fact for any, for fact. Um, they're looking for people who can come Monday through Wednesday in the mornings and then also Thursday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you're interested in volunteering um, this Thanksgiving, please contact. Um, do we have an email for that? No. So Ken, we probably should. We're going to be we're going to send this email to your community groups also and on the app. Yeah because that's an easy peasy way of doing things, praise God. Um, so you can contact Ken. We'll get your, his email out to you so that you can um, say, hey, I'd love to volunteer Monday through Wednesday or Thursday from 8 to 3. Yes, great, awesome. Final, um, final item is we have a worship night coming up on November 4th. I didn't even have to woo you. It woos, it woos in general. Um, so we have a worship night coming up on November 4th, but this is not just any worship night. Um, we actually are celebrating the 30th year of our pastors serving as pastors in the Abbey Church. Yes. So... On November 4th, please get here at 6 p.m. We're going to enter into the evening with a night of worship, and then we're actually going to have a reception to follow that really is going to honor them and to celebrate them. If you want to bring gifts, please bring gifts. Monetary gifts are welcomed. Tangible gifts are welcomed. Prophetic gifts are welcomed. All the gifts. Words of encouragement are welcomed. Notes. What other uh, love languages are there? Um, I guess hugs, but let's not get crazy. Um, <laughs> physical touch, right? Um, okay, so please mark your calendars. We really want to see you and really just want to provide an atmosphere of honor and celebration to our pastors. Um, at this moment, we would like to dismiss our kids to Kids Church and um, get them started. And then I'm going to welcome Joe Browback. Yeah, I've got one. Awesome. Well, I think Tab took all of the woo. I normally, uh, I normally rely on my charm and wit when I uh, take up the offering. Today, I, I don't know if there's anything left after Tab's been up here. Um, <laughs> woo! <laughs> no, I do, I do actually uh, want to just take a moment to share from my heart um, to, before I take up the offering. God's been speaking to me a little bit here recently as we've transitioned in this period of living open-handed and with our um, building campaign, uh, Raise the Banner, there's the banner. Uh, <laughs> I, th I thought that was the slide, but it's not the full slide. Anyways, so, but I wanted to share just a little bit about what God's been speaking to me. If you, if you know me at all, if you've hung out with me, some would may say that I am cheap. Um, I, I prefer frugal, frugal, yeah. Um, you know, I, Alyssa would love to have new carpet in our house or tile actually is what she wants. And my response to that is like, well, let's just get like at least five more years of use out of the carpet we have until it's just like really bad and then we can replace it. Um, that's just, that's just me. So, so when I think, of, when I begin to, th I'll be brutally honest though, when I begin to think about, you know, raising funds to really dress up the outside here, that's not my initial um, motivation. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, my my initial motivation is okay. Well, how do we bless people? That's what matters is who's in here. Um, but as I prayed into it, and it actually hit me the hardest when we were at the men's retreat. Um, Dwayne White was preaching, and he said something kind of offhand comment in the middle of his sermon, and he made the comment that God's not fair, but He is just. And it, it hit me. And at first I was like, 
that that stings. I don't I don't really understand what that means. I don't I don't know if I like it. Uh, I don't know if I want to understand that. Uh, <laughs> but he gave an example in in uh, Matthew where the story of the talents. Do y'all know that story? So God gave five talents to one person, two talents to the next person, and one talent to the other. And the point of that story was that's not fair. They had different amounts. Well, why was that? But the reality was it was just because they all had the same opportunity. Um, and that opportunity, what was key there? And then I got to thinking about it in my financial brain. So when you, they all doubled, the first two doubled their returns. So five got 10, two got four, and then one went and buried it. And, and God came back and said, well done, my good and faithful servant to the first two. And literally said, let's throw this last one out. Because, but as I thought about it, I was like, okay, if they all had the same opportunity, five doubled, two doubled, one could have doubled, one to two, two to four, four to eight, those compound returns, they may have been a year behind this person with two, but they're still going to massively double and double and double those con the you know Einstein says that the eighth wonder of the world is compound returns all of you financial nerds out there just love that quote uh, <laughs> but so the key there is not that even the money and the math even though that makes me happy the the key there is the opportunity um, so and when I had that realization God took me back to what we're doing here We've been positioned in a place where there's a highway that's being built up in front of us and there's an opportunity that we have in, in front of us to position ourselves for people to make ourselves, set us up on a hill, make ourselves visible for people to come in and be blessed. Um, so that just motivated me on a whole different level to take advantage of the opportunities in front of us. I, you know, you think about it and I, I want to encourage you both in our campaign, but also in your personal lives. There's opportunities that are in front of you all. Um, Don Ferrier just won, let me see if I get this right, most zero energy, net zero energy efficient home, something amazing in the U.S. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that is an opportunity that is in front of him that he's pursuing a dream that God's put in his heart. Uh, there's opp what opportunities are in your heart that God has laid in your heart uh, that are in front of you that you can step into and not bury in the sand? Um, so as you give today, I just want to encourage you, um, follow what's in your heart. Take that risk. Back to what we were talking about with reckless love this morning. You know, the I, I just have to read the scripture real fast because it, it hit me. So take the thousand. Give it to the one who risked the most. And get rid of this play it safe who won't go out on a limb. Throw him out into the other darkness. Uh, God wants us to take risks for the kingdom. So I just want to encourage you to take advantage of the opportunities in front of you. Take those steps out in faith. Um, there will be ways to give on the screen. Um, be blessed in your giving. Lord, we just, uh, we just bless everyone in this room. We just pray that you'll open their eyes to see the opportunities that are in front of them. Um, speak to them right now just in, in what actionable steps they can take to um, step into your glory and your, your destiny for their life. In Jesus' name, amen.